Hi, this is Jason with Geek Fever Games. We're back, and we are now going to dive into a battle uh, for Queen's Quest. So we're actually going to pick this up pretty much where we left the last video off, which was an overview of the exploration and the, the party movement aspects of the game. We have our uh, party token here, and what we said uh, we would do at some point in that video, we said we would uh, proceed back to town to try to return the relic. And in doing so, we're actually going to engage battle with uh, these two monsters here. We have a, a pack of zombies and a pack of rodents. So we're going to start from that point where we have just charged into these two monster packs. Now, uh, let's talk about how we have things set up here. I changed things a little bit. I have a wood elf warrior at this point. The warrior is the vanguard role. And this character is also doubling as the leader uh, as a passive role, but that's neither here nor there at the moment. We also have a human rogue, uh, which is the lone wolf role, and that character will double as the quartermaster. <clears throat> and you'll see some of these elements come into play shortly. Uh, we've given out a couple items and a couple skills, so you can see a lot of the different aspects of the game. So uh, really quick, for example, the wood elf has a skill called berserk, which is while the wood elf is damaged, his speed will be increased by one. He also has an item, which is a quiver for his bow, and it says that he gains plus one strength versus fire, ice, and poison packs. So if any of those types of monsters enter battle, uh, he'll be stronger against them. The human rogue has an assassinate skill, you'll see that shortly, and also a little bit of uh, leather armor here. Let me quickly tell you how, uh, how we determine how you set up on the battle board. This is the battle board here. Here is my uh, wood elf, and here's my human. Now, at the very beginning of the game, everyone defaults to a speed of slow, which is the fourth column over, and a strength of five plus. Um, from there, your different attributes and skills and items will essentially move you up or to the left, hopefully. Those are the good directions that you want to go. Now, the wood elf, as a race, begins with plus one speed. So right off the bat, the wood elf is faster. The human is, uh, starts at slow and five plus, but we're also gonna say that the human has visited the church in town uh, just before this battle. Uh, way back at the beginning of the game, during the town phase, they went to the church and they got strong and hastened. So these status effects mean that they are stronger and faster by one. So for this battle, the human rogue will begin there. So let's begin battle. We've just charged in with the party. Battle begins immediately. So we have zombies and rodents. The first thing that happens is we draw a pack type. The lone wolf roll keeps these packed, uh, pack type tokens here. And we draw one for each to determine what type of zombies those are and what type of rodents those are. So the zombies are giant zombies. Now, here's an important aspect. We are currently in the dark forest. And on each of these packed, uh, pack type tokens, you're going to see that there is a size of the pack based on the depth in the dungeon. In this case, the dark forest has a star, and the star says redraw. We cannot have giant monsters in the dark forest. That's intentional because giants are very difficult to, to defeat, and they only show up in the ice caves and below. So we discard that, and we're going to redraw the next pack, which is a pack of poison zombies. So the zombies are poison, and poison in the dark forest are large, large size. In a two-player game, a large pack is three cubes. So for zombies, we have three poison zombie cubes that get added on the battle board in the zombie space, right there. They hit hard, they hit on three plus, but they're very slow. The rodents are unholy rodents, that is bad news. But in the Dark Forest, at least it's only a medium-sized pack, which is only two in a two-player game. So we take two unholy uh, rodents. We put two black cubes in the rodent spot. Those are the monster packs for the beginning of battle. And now we start. Uh, so battle begins uh, always from left to right. We go column by column. Uh, if there are heroes in the column, then the heroes execute their attacks after the monsters in the column. So if there are monster cubes in the column, they attack first. Um, everything actually resolves simultaneously within the column, but it's easier to resolve doing the monster cubes first. So there's nothing in, the, in this column, nothing in this column. We get to the normal. We have two unholy rodents. 
Each cube gets one die, so there's two dice for the rodents. They roll, and they hit on a five plus. In this case, they did not get any hits. That's great, we're not gonna complain. Now we do all of the heroes in the column, starting with whoever's uh, furthest, uh, closest to the top. So the human rogue. All heroes automatically get two dice by default, unless you have some special item that changes or enhances that. So the humans have to, uh, have to say which monster pack they're going to attack. Now, here, the, uh, these guys have basically already executed their attack. If we attack them, we're not, gonna, uh, we're not gonna prevent any hits on us. But if we attack the zombies before they get to go, we might be able to take some of them out before they roll. So he's going to attack the zombies. He hits on a four plus. He did not get any hits. So now we're gonna talk about some of our skills and feats. Uh, we have the, uh, the skill here to spend a feat and your next attack, this is assassinate, your next attack is going to be at plus one strength and reroll misses once versus slower packs. Now this is a slower pack, they're slower than the character. I technically should have actually done this beforehand, so I didn't do it, we'll save that for next round. However, I do have potions and potions are always helpful to reroll an entire roll as I talked about in the last video. So the human is going to say, yeah, that was a crappy roll. We're going to spend a potion and re-roll both dice. Awesome. Two sixes. That takes out two of the zombie uh, poison zombies. All right. Um, then we have the wood elf warrior. Wood elf warrior, again, two dice by default. Now, remember, we have the, uh, the quiver here, which says plus one strength versus fire, ice, and poison packs. Well, that's a poison pack. So the Wood Elf essentially has plus one strength, which means for this attack, it's actually like it's a four plus. We're gonna leave him here, but it's like it's a four plus. So we're gonna roll, we need fours, that's one hit, that takes out the last of the zombie. Excellent. That's it for the human attacks, we get to the end. No more uh, in any of the columns. If you consult the player reference card during battle, we have the five stages of battle, which we just did. Then we have end of round. If there are any monsters remaining, which there are, we still have these two rodents here, uh, then monsters charge, there's a chance to flee, and we start a new round. So monsters charge, what does that mean? Well, we've talked about monsters lurking, which means all monsters on the dungeon board move two spaces towards the party. Monsters charging is actually even worse. What it says is all monsters that are within two areas, two tiles of the party, actually move four spaces towards the party because they hear the sound of battle. So these two monsters charge in and actually reach the party and they are now going to enter battle and join the monsters that are already here. So we immediately draw pack types for these guys. So we have fire demons, that is just about the worst it could be. However, in the dark forest, that's a small pack. So there's only one of them, but they are going to attack way fast and way strong. Then we also have green skins here, and the green skins are ice, and in the dark forest, it's a medium pack of ice uh, green skins. So we have two blue cubes that go in the green, green skin spot. There's a chance to flee. The vanguard can decide if they want to roll. Uh, it's a, a five plus chance to succeed, uh, and you'd flee and you'd move your uh, pawn away from the spot, uh, and then these monsters that weren't defeated would actually go back on the board. We're not gonna flee, we're gonna stick it out. So next round begins. Back to the top, first column, nothing happens. Second column, we have a demon that's gonna attack. He hits on a three plus. He hits. All right, allocation of hits from monsters is they are always allocated first to the vanguard, whoever that is, whoever has the vanguard roll, and then clockwise from there. So there's only one hit, the vanguard takes a hit unless he has something to defend against that. Uh, so in this case, there he has no armor, there's nothing special, he is going to take a point of damage to his health. Now the good news is, remember he has that berserk skill, which says while damaged, plus one speed. So essentially for the rest of this battle, his speed is now increased. So that's actually going to help. All right, so now uh, the blue green skins, they get to roll two dice. Uh, they hit on a five plus, that is two misses. Uh, now any heroes in that column. So our Wood Elf Vanguard is going to attack. Let's see, who should he attack now? Uh, the rodents have not gone and they're unholy, so they have the chance of weakening people. 
However, this demon is super dangerous if we don't take him out before next round. But I'm going to hope that the human rogue maybe will be able to take out the demon. So the wood elf warrior is actually going to go after the two rodents because we don't want them to weaken us. That is a bad roll. Uh, I don't get anything from my quiver against uh, unholy, so I don't have any bonus there. I'm going to spend a potion and re-roll. And I still failed. I need five plus to hit. I cannot spend potions again. You can only spend potions once per roll, uh, per die roll. Now, the quartermaster, which is over here on the human, remember that's a passive uh, uh, roll, uh, the quartermaster has what's called teamwork, which works very similar to potions, except teamwork can be used on other characters' rolls. Uh, just like potions, you can only do uh, use one teamwork per die roll uh, attempt. So in this case, the human... Uh, Quartermaster is saying, yes, let's absolutely spend a teamwork and let that Wood Elf re-roll once again. So we're going to roll again. There, we got a hit. So we take out one of those unholy monsters. That's good progress. We'll take it. All right, moving on to the next column. There is one rodent left. The rodent hits on five plus. We roll for the rodent. Miss. Then we have the human rogue. And the human rogue says, yeah, we're going to go after that, uh, that demon, fire demon up there because that is super bad. Uh, and he has nothing special to help against that, so we're just going to roll. And a four will do it, because I am currently strengthened. So that takes out that pack. End of round, because uh, there's nothing else in the columns. Uh, once again, monsters charge. So we look back at the dungeon. Are there any monsters within two tiles? No. However, then there's a we fall back to monsters lurking, which means you look at the whole dungeon. Are there any monsters in the whole dungeon? They move two spaces towards the party. In this case, there are none. And so the very last in the chain of kind of where you go from there, you, monsters charge to monsters uh, lurk. And then the last is spawn two. So if there's nothing else to do, we spawn two new monsters on the closest monster lair. So there are now fungoids and skeletons up there, and if battle goes on long enough, they may make their way into battle. Flea attempt. We're not going to flee. Uh, we go back to the top. First column, second column, these two ice monsters, the ice greenskins. Uh, that is no hits. Then we have our wood elf warrior. So who are we going to attack now? Uh, the wood elf is actually going to go after those green skins because they're ice and I have that really good hunt uh, ability against ice. So I have plus one strength. Essentially, I'll hit them on a four plus instead of five plus. And that's one hit on the ice monsters. Then we go to the next column, the unholy rodents. They miss. The human rogue will try to take out uh, the unholy rodents because they're way worse than the uh, ice monsters. And that is a hit on the unholies. All right, so that takes them out. End of round, monsters charge if they are within two tiles, and they are in this case. So one, two, three, four, and they actually made it to us. So in this case, even though we have uh, four already in battle that we've been battling, a fifth will join the battle. Now I say a fifth and not a sixth. We're not gonna add both of these because the maximum number of monster packs that you can have in one battle is five. So the, in this case, the lone wolf actually gets to decide which of these two do we want to let into the battle, and then the other one is just going to linger one space away. So let's say we add these skeletons to the battle. We draw the last of these types. They are sneaky skeletons. Sneaky are purple, and in the dark forest, that's a medium pack, so we put two purple on the skeleton spot. And we now have our fifth and final pack that can be in this battle. So this is actually really good. You want to have big battles, but you want to control them. And you want to have them kind of slowly come in so you don't get overwhelmed. Back to the top. The green skin attacks and hits. So that is a hit on the wood elf, which means the wood elf is going to be slowed. And in this case, taken out. Uh, that is the last health on the wood elf. And once again, they all, all the hits start at the vanguard and go clockwise, so there's no choice uh, about that. So in this case, the wood elf actually goes down, goes unconscious. What we do is we take his uh, character pawn, and we bring it over to his mat, and we put it on the two spot on his health track. The reason is he's unconscious. If battle goes on too long and he's not revived, uh, then he will actually, at the end of each round, he reduces by one. If he reaches the zero spot on his health track, he is dead. 
And this is a roguelike, so this is permadeath removed from the game. The player will get to generate a new character, which will come in later on in the dungeon. He has to be found. So he is now on the two spot. Okay, uh, that was that was fun. So now he died, but or he's unconscious, but it was by an attack in the same column. So he does still get his attack because again, the column is simultaneous. So he is going to attack the, uh, he'll attack that green skin because he gets the plus one strength from the quiver and that took the green skin out. All right, that was him. He's now unconscious. We move on, we have the human here. Now the human has a special feat. So every character has basic feats that are on all of the race and class cards. The human has prayer, uh, the rogue has stealth, the Wood Elf actually has a ranged feat, which he could have been using. Uh, the Warrior has a melee feat, and there's two others as well. The Prayer feat says you can spend a feat to heal X damage and revive. So, what does X mean? X means however many prayer keywords the character has. In this case, just the one that's on the card. There are items and skills that will increase the number of keywords that you have. So, he is going to spend a feat and heal one damage on this character, which revives him and brings him right back where he was. So he's still slowed. He has one health, so he is back to one. And that was using a prayer feat. In fact, we can even spend another feat to raise his health up to two, which is probably a good idea, so he doesn't go down again. Okay, uh, we move on to the human, and that, that did not take up the human's action. Uh, that was just a feat, which can be used kind of as an instant. Okay, so now the, uh, he will attack the skeletons. And we get one hit on the skeletons. Skeleton, there's only one left, he gets to attack. He hits, so he actually hits the wood elf again. Wood elf takes a damage, but he's only down to one. So we're okay, end of round, monsters will charge, but at this point, no more monsters are going to join the battle. Uh, because again, we already have five. Okay, back to the top, we're almost done with this. So we're gonna attack those skeletons. And we defeated them, boom, end of combat. Good job, we defeated five different packs. So let's look at what happens next. Uh, end of battle, victory. Any unconscious characters are revived back to uh, one health. So in this case, we already revived them. Uh, then we do battle results or treasure chest. If this was a treasure chest or a boss fight, uh, the leader would roll, and the leader has a chart that indicates what the treasure chest roll is. But this was not a treasure chest fight. This was a normal one. So instead, we have the, uh, the Vanguard roll, which has battle results here on the Vanguard roll. So we're going to roll a die, and it says we get a bonus if there were four or more packs. A bonus is an extra die. We get to take the best result. So in this case, that's actually a bad, bad die result. Uh, two is the best that we got. So we're going to spend a potion, because we can always spend potions on any die roll. We're going to re-roll that. Uh, a four is pretty decent, so we'll take it. We get one common item. Nice and simple. We get a common item. Uh, the leader gets to choose first if the leader wants to take that item. If not, goes around the table until someone takes it. Or if no one wants it, then it can just get discarded. Uh, then we go into the camp phase. So battle is over, and we proceed to camp. At the beginning of camp, the quartermaster feeds the party and searches. Feeding the party is very simple. As long as there is food, the party will eat. And the party eats two food by default. If the full party cannot eat, then characters are going to become weakened. Uh, you can start taking damage uh, and so on. It's really bad. You basically have a limited time that you can keep spelunking in the dungeon, uh, trying to get to the shrines and, and finding the relics. Whenever the full party eats, if the quartermaster is an active role, then the quartermaster will actually gain experience for the full party eating. The quartermaster was not active role in this case, though. All right, so then we have the search role. The quartermaster on their card, we have a search uh, role here, and we get a bonus if we're at depth three or four in the dungeon. We're not. So we roll a single die as a five, and a five says we gain one potion per player in the game, so two potions. And we also gain a food. So that is how we can keep going in the dungeon. If we roll really well on the search roll, we gain some food. Potions are given to the Vanguard first and clockwise. So the potion uh, that the Vanguard spent will be increased by one. And then the human also gets a potion. So that's great. That was a really good search roll. And now we have the full camp phase. So everyone gets to roll a recovery roll, which is right over here. 
That's basically your attempt to heal and shed. So we have like slow, uh, and all these status effects, poison, things like that. So a one by the wood elf is a bad uh, <laughs> recovery roll. Nothing is recovered. He's still slow. So actually he should have been down here. Um, and he can re-roll that with a potion if he wants. We'll just keep going for now. The human player rolls a two and a two says heal one damage. Well, he didn't take any damage, so he's fine. Then training. If anyone wants to spend experience that they've accumulated, they can buy one of these three uh, skill cards that we have face up on the party management screen for the specified experience. And then poison. If anyone has the poison status effect, that would do two damage to them, and this can kill them during the camp phase. So this is, poison can be really dangerous because two damage is like half of your health for most characters. Then we're back at the explore, back at the top. Uh, which means that we're exploring tiles and moving the party. We're out of combat. All right, so there's a lot of different pieces that I've kind of thrown at you. Battle is actually very fast, uh, just explaining everything. But uh, hopefully that makes some sense, and hopefully it's exciting. We look forward to talking with you soon and showing you more. Thanks.